What's up everybody, welcome back to part two of player dashboards. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going over how to create functions and kind of creating the backbone of what is going to be your player dashboard. So if the creating like the, the axes and the plots and everything was the skeleton, this is kind of the flesh, if we're, that's a terrible analogy. But anyways, creating functions is a great way to make it so your code is repeatable. And by this, it means that you don't have to sit and type out your code a bunch of times. For example, if you wanted to plot a bunch of shot maps on different axes, you don't have to sit and type out the code for each shot map. You can just create a function which then allows you to repeat that code over and over in a super simple way. It makes your code a lot cleaner and a lot simpler as well. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be going over how to create a function and then as well how to put that function in a separate file and then import that function into our coding function where we're creating the dashboard. So first of all, what we're gonna do, we're gonna head over to the same Jupyter Notebook that we were using before. And if you want to, you can go ahead and download the file that's in my GitHub for the data that we're gonna be using. It's from the Europa League final. It is called Europa Final. And you can go ahead and we're going to import that. So what we do is we just come in here and we just say, we're gonna create our data frame. It's gonna be df equals pd.read underscore CSV. And we just need to type in Europa final it has a capital f dot csv and then we can look at this and we can see that just kind of what it looks like so if we say df dot head so as we can see it has a minute a second the team id which is the team x y the period the type which is like a pass shot goal etc then it has the outcome and then it has player ID and then end X and end Y. So player ID is just the player number. So what we wanna do is we wanna create a function that's going to allow us to plot a heat map on the axes that we want to. So if we were doing this normally, the way we would do this is we would just filter our, say we're doing a pass heat map. We would just filter our heat map and we would say df equals df.loc and then we would say df and then pass in the column so we want to do um, we want to filter for manchester united's um, passes so we would say df team id is equal to and then we have to put in manchester united and then as well since we want to be filtering for two we actually need to put this in parentheses so put it in parentheses and then we need to do the ampersand and we can do uh, same thing, parentheses, df. And then we wanna filter for just passes. So we'll say type and then is equal to pass. So we normally would do that. And then we would come down here and we would plot our heat map so what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna put this inside of our function and put the heat map code inside of a function. So our function is gonna look like this. We're gonna say def and then plot underscore heat map. That's the name of our function. And then we're gonna do parentheses and a colon. And then if we hit enter, and it'll give us the proper indentation, it needs to be a tab or four spaces. And we're gonna put this inside of our function. So right now we have a plot, we have a heat map with this inside, but we actually aren't gonna use DF because that's the name of our data frame. We wanna create a data frame that's only used inside of this plot heat map. So we're gonna make one called heat underscore DF, so our heat map data frame. So anywhere inside of our function, we're just gonna go ahead and say heat underscore DF, and then just change all of these DFs to heat DF. I'm just gonna hit copy and paste real quick. So now what it's doing is we are saying that we're going to pass in a data frame which is going to be assigned to heat df and then on this heat df we are going to filter for the team id in the pass. So now we can see that hey maybe we don't have a want to have a static variable such as manchester united so we're going to create another variable called team id 
We can come in here and delete Manchester United, the string, and say team ID equals team ID. So we're saying heat DF column team ID is equal to team ID. Then as well, maybe we don't want it just to always be pass. So since these are different plays and different types of actions, we're gonna say P underscore type, which just stands for play type. So what we can do now is we can switch pass and we're just gonna say this equals P underscore type. And then the next thing we need to do is plot our heat map. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna say KDE equals SNS.KDE plot. So this is how we create a heat map. And then we need to set our X equal to heat underscore DF dot X. Then our Y equal to heat underscore DF dot Y. And then we need to set our data equal to heat underscore DF. And then that's kind of all we need, but we want to do a little bit more. We're gonna say shade equals true. And then we want our C map to be, we can do magma is a good C map. And then as well, what we're gonna do is we are going to set the threshold equal to 0 0.05. And then as well, since we're using this heat map to kind of say which axis we wanna plot it on, we're gonna say AX equals AX, and we're gonna create another um, argument up here called AX. So what this is doing is this is a function that's going to allow us to just call this function at anywhere in the code and we pass in these arguments right here and it will do the math for us and kind of not the math, it'll do the code for us that we've put in this function and it just makes it so it's repeatable and we can plot it in different places on different um, axes and different plots. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here, run this code, so we have our heat map, and then we're just gonna decide which one we wanna plot it on. So we wanna plot it on the zero three right here. So what we'll do is we'll just come down here and we'll say underneath the zero three, we'll say plot underscore heat map. And then we just need to pass in these arguments right here. So heat DF, we wanna say heat underscore DF is equal to our data frame. And then we our other arguments are team ID. So we wanna say team ID equals, we want Manchester United. And then our P type, so we're gonna say P underscore type equals, and then we're gonna do shot or passes, so pass. And then our AX equals, since we're plotting this on AX4, AX4. So now we run this and it says X is not defined. That is because I forgot to run this. I had to reset the code. So it didn't have anything to do with our function, sorry. But we do that and now we can see, oh, there we go. We now have a heat map. Obviously, this is not what it's going to look like in the end, but it is plotting on our x-axis from zero to 100 and then our y-axis from 120, zero to 120. So that is kind of how it works and kind of how we can create a function. And then as well, if we wanted to plot via real down here on the one one, or let's do it on zero two, just it'll be easier to see. So we'll get rid of this one. And then we'll just do plot heat map again uh, on axis three. So we'll say plot underscore heat map. And then we'll just say heat underscore DF equals DF team ID equals via real. And then P underscore type equals pass, and then AX equals AX4. Oh, sorry, AX3. I was looking at this and copying it, I wasn't thinking. So it didn't plot because, oh, it didn't plot because I made a mistake in the code. So if we come up here, we actually need to say heat underscore DF equals heat, or equals DF dot copy. So that way it's making a copy of the data frame to use in here. We don't want to essentially be, cause if we do this multiple times, it's gonna create heat DF and then it's going to make it so we can't manipulate the heat DF. So we want to make it so it's resetting that data frame every time. And then we can do this again. 
So now when we come down and we run the code, it should plot, okay, here's Villarreal and here is Manchester United. So that's kind of the basics of why we use functions and kind of the importance of using them as well. So what I would suggest is I'm not going to go through and make every single function because that I use on my player and team dashboards because that would take forever. Hopefully this video is kind of a way to show you how you can get started creating functions. For example, if I wanted one called um, pass networks, I would take all the code that I had written for pass networks and then I would put it into a function like this. So put it into a function with all the code and then make sure I'm creating variables so that it becomes where instead of me having to create static and manually type in the arguments and the variables, or I can just pass them into the function right here and then it will do the code and then I can just add it down here. So the next part that we want to do is we could just have all of the code in here and in this file, that'd be fine. But what we want to do is we actually want to go ahead and take this code and we're going to put it in a separate file so that we can kind of imp so that we can import that into our function. And so we're not just having a bunch of code and making it kind of a really big file. We want to have it in a separate file that holds all of our functions. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to go out of Jupyter Notebook and we're going and we're going to go to something that I like to use. It's called Sublime Text down here. You can use any sort of text editor if you want, but we're just gonna start by saying file, save as, and then if you come into the file where you have your actual Jupyter Notebook, mine's in a file I've created on my desktop called dashboards, and we're just gonna call this functions.py. So you need to do .py on the end of whatever you name your file. So I've named mine functions and then .py means that it's a Python file and we will save that. So now we have our file right here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come over and we're just going to cut. So instead of copy, we're gonna cut and paste into here. So it looks the same. It's got all the syntax and everything. So what we do, is we just save this file so it's called functions and then we can come up here to the top uh, where we import all of our packages and our modules and we'll just say from functions import plot underscore heat map so run that it's imported and then it does the exact same thing now we're going to switch this back to i was testing some stuff because I made an error. <laughs> so we'll read in our data frame and then we will come down here and we will plot this right here. We'll just replot it. And it says SNS not defined. That is because I you have to import the in here as well. You have to, in your actual function, you have to say you have to import your packages that you want. So we'll say import Seaborn as SNS. So you have to make sure that you're importing your packages in here too. Save it, rerun this, and come in here. And it says SNS is not defined. You might need to restart your kernel. Sometimes it bugs out. So make sure you just restart it and then come and just restart everything you got going. Sorry, this is the pain of coding. Sometimes you run into this kind of stuff and now it says X is not defined. It's because I did not run X right here. And now it's saying DF is not defined. Oh, that is because I need to do, instead of DF.copy, I need to do heat underscore DF.copy. Save it. And then we will do restart the kernel. Sorry, I normally, mess up just as much as I am right now. All right, there we go. So same thing, we're, I'm sorry that I just messed up so much right there, but kind of get the gig. I could cut that out, but I feel like it's helpful to see how you kind of read errors and have to go back and fix stuff because that happens all the time in coding. 
So that is essentially how we can create functions to do what we want to do. So the next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a video of me just going through and creating all the functions, kind of just adding commentary. It's not gonna be as much of a tutorial, but rather you can see how I do it and how I work with it. So that I'll either do as a live stream or I'll do it as some sort of um, just a video of me doing that as well. So that's kind of the basics. I would test, I would make sure that you understand functions and understand how they work. Otherwise, this part can be kind of confusing. Functions for me were definitely the part that were the hardest to learn and kind of the hardest to grasp when I first started learning to code. So if you can get functions, you're really, it's kind of an advanced, not an advanced topic, but it's kind of, as soon as you can understand functions, you're kind of, you go from beginner to intermediate is what I think, so. Anyways, thanks for watching this video, guys. If you like this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And that is it. I will catch you in the next video. Peace.